It's the start of another day at the animal shelter, and welfare officer Gillian is checking what calls are on for today. The lads actually were, were jockeying it. They tried to clear the railings. The horse got impaled on it. They got the horse off the railings, but they ran off and left them there. The first call is a priority, as the horse has been seriously injured. It has apparently run into some metal railings. He's standing on all fours, and he's so nothing yeah, broken. Yeah, that's a good sign. Oh yeah, gotcha. On closer inspection, the injury looks quite bad. That's nasty. He definitely needs some stitching in there. We've just radioed in for the horse box to be brought. Um, he's quite badly cut up, you know. He's, he's a dark bay, so you can't even see how bad he is. Given the violent nature of the incident, the guards have been called for support in case the animal's abusers come back. Hey, you know I mean? Is that what they said? A man who helped save the horse yeah. is describing what the kids were doing to it. No, I know, yeah. No. They were riding around after this happened. This man witnessed it and they continued to ride him around. Once he was lifted off the railings with the leg the way he was, they were actually still riding around in him. And I then suggested taking a hammer to his head. Do a DIY job yourself, as I said. It's too dear to call out a vet, so they can go down to Smithfield and buy another one for 50 euros like, of the same type of horse, so they wanted to take a hammer to the horse's head instead. The guards are staying yeah. close by in case the horse's attackers come back before he can be loaded into the horse box. Ooh, oh. come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Good boy. There we go. Lock her up there. It's put into a stable for the night where it gets some much needed food and rest. We've taken him in here into the stable for the night. So he'll spend the night here. And um, he was really thirsty when he came in. So he's come in and he's after drinking a load of water and he's moved on to his hay. The vet's come in and had a look at him. He's given him some pain relief and they'll be able to address the wound tomorrow. He's an older boy. Well, he's not, he's not very old, but he's maybe 12 or there or thereabouts. Liam has just had an update from the vet, but it's not good news. It's pretty difficult to examine something like that in the situation you're in. Now, it looked pretty bad when we seen it at first, but I've just spoken to the vet now. Um, the extent of the injury, it was a critical injury. The impalement had gone a lot more deeper than we had thought at the scene. A foal that was bought at Smithfield Horse Fair has just been brought in after it got tangled in a rope. What happened was he's not broken in and the owners obviously tied him to a tree so he couldn't get away and he entangled himself and went down. So once the pony's down for a couple of hours, they can start having serious problems. So rehydrate him first and get him onto a drip and get him onto his feet as quick as possible. Do you see how impression The veterinary team are trying very hard to get the pony back on its feet. We just got a call to say he was down, right over he's pretty cold. Got some thermal sheets on him and blanketed him up. And I was talking to a couple of the young lads over there, and they tell me that uh, he's owned by a 14 year old who's still at school. And he bought it at Smithfield Market for 200 quid yesterday. Oh, See, where he was tied up, he's no shelter from the elements. Absolutely freezing cold, lashing rain. So he's taken all the elements on board and then exhausted himself trying to get out of the rope. So he may be incubating something as well when he was bought at Smithfield because these kids just buy them. They don't have anyone there to check the animal out for them, what they're buying. So they don't know exactly what they're buying. He could have been incubating something that we don't know about yet. When horses lay down for a long period of time, you know, he's very cold as well. They get acidotic, so we are trying to fix all that. It's terrible to see animals coming in this state. The team are moving him to the barn to see if he'll get on his feet. With most animals that arrive at the shelter, there are no medical records, making their treatment more complex. When we get them in, it's a detective story from, from the first minute because we have no background. So whilst, you know, they can, the vets can surmise what the problem may be, you know, we really just have to kind of wait and see and try and get more information to work out what's wrong with these animals. Well, he's a little bit stronger now. He was trying to fight with us there, trying to stand up. There we go. I think I'll give my hand to you, 
Yeah. Horses are so heavy that they get like pins and needles in all their muscles, and then they find it very difficult to stand up. Later on, maybe we give you more fluids, but at the moment, just keep him warm, and, yeah. and that's it. That's maybe if he wants to drink a little bit of water. I'll try and get some water into him. Or if he wants to eat something. Yeah. This is this is not new a new story for us. This is you know we've seen them month after month after month. We allegedly have a 14 year old schoolboy bought this animal. Doesn't have adequate facilities. Animal ends up in trouble because they don't know how to care for him properly, and this is the result. You know until we have strict regulation um, and enforcement, we're going to continue to see these animals suffer. Despite their efforts, the foal died during the night. Across the city, Lisa and Tony are on their way to an urgent call. A stray horse has run through some fencing and has become trapped. Oh, look at you, Walter. You give yourself a nasty laceration. You can see his hooves are well stuck in there. So we're going to get the fire brigade down to be able to get his, his hooves out. Unfortunately, this is something that we've seen an awful lot of. His palestrate fencing is not suitable when it comes to horses. It's not fastened up properly, and what happens is it falls down or a horse knocks it down or whatever, and they end up in a situation like this. This guy's looking like he might be pretty lucky. His front legs don't look like they've sustained too much in the way of damage, but he's got a really nasty laceration, and you can see all around here is very dirty, and to have an open wound like that is not going to be good for him. We were just lucky, really, that there was a passerby that happened to see him. Tony's calling the fire service for help. In the meantime, Lisa is trying her best to keep the horse calm. I'm just keeping his head covered. It tends to keep him a little bit calmer. You can see there at his back leg where he's been thrashing around and the spikes have kind of been hitting onto the inside. So if he kind of stays quiet, he's less likely to kind of keep injuring himself. So um, just if his head is covered, he'll be a little bit quieter. Luckily, the fire service have arrived to help. Yeah, yeah, Hydraulic yeah. equipment, normally used in car accidents, is brought in to open a gap in the fence. The horse is remaining calm for now. Right, let's try and pull that fence just there because he's going to hop up. One, two, three. Pull his mane, yeah? Right here. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The horse box now to come along so we can transport him out of here. He's um, the wounds there on the inside of his leg, which we need to get checked out by a vet. And um, just he's he's a little bit shocky. You can see him shaking, and he's 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 not he's not the better for it. Put it that way. But um, he's not too severely injured, thank God. It's been a successful rescue, and the horse will be taken back to the shelter for a checkover. Overall, his body condition is very good. And apart from the cuts on the inside of his legs, which are going to need treatment, he's looking really well. It's all looking really good for you, pal. It's great because, like, I mean, it could have, it could have been a completion or a disaster if he had been left there for any amount of time. The more and more he thrashed, obviously, the more he was going to injure himself and hurt himself. So, for the fact that somebody got to see him um, quite quickly. It worked out really well for this horse. The following day, the horse's owner came and picked it up. It's early in the morning and the start of a new shift out on the road for welfare officer Lisa Kemp. She's heading to an urgent call from a man who says a horse has gone down in a field. Someone there, and there's a horse down. The horse has strayed in to where the man has his animals. I put that coat on him myself, yeah? Just because he was thin, that keep a bit of warmth in from him, you know? I think one of his back legs is just completely gone. Because he keeps them going and down, did you know? notice any kind of lameness or anything else like that no, with him? Or? Like, no, he was he... in here, there was nothing. He just looked a bit stiff, that was it. Yeah. Now, he could have been stiff with the cold, because of the, the, like, the snow and whatever yeah. else, like, you know that way? Yeah. He's in pain, he is, God. Yeah, he's colicking, I'd say. Colic, would you think that's it? I would say is, so, yeah? with yeah. the thrashing and everything yeah, else yeah, like that. Yeah. That's what I would think. Lisa called back to base for help. There is people out there that honestly, generally want to keep horses and look after them, but there's some out there that just don't. But it's bad when you're seeing this, like, you know, it knocks it out, you know. We try our best for them, like, and 
And again, there's nothing you can do at the end of the day. I think we're going to shoot him um, because he's suffering. He's he he's suffering for one. If we can't get him up, we can't transport him in a box. That's it. Um, we've rang a vet that uh, is in the area to see will he come out and help us out. Frustrating. Yeah, it is frustrating. It's sad because he's only it's a, he's only young. I'd say it's only a two three year old. And we're kind of standing here in the field, standing beside him, waiting for somebody to come out to shoot him. A local vet has arrived and tries to get the horse on his feet, but he doesn't have enough energy to stand up. It's malnutrition, yeah. it's not a colic. I know we thought it might have been a colic, but it's not a colic. And um, uh, it's not right. Don't have to let him go. He can't stand. Horses sleep standing up. He can't even stand. No, I love him. In a better place. When you start to learn what's right and what's best for animals, um, and in this case, you could quite clearly see that the best thing for this animal is to to be euthanized. You know, so. Um, you do learn what's, what's best for them. And you do grow a thick skin, I suppose. That's, that's the only way to cope with it, is a thick skin. Out on the road, Inspector Tony is responding to an urgent call. A horse has apparently fallen through a metal fence and is lying drowning in a stream. Where are we from here? Right, come on. Where are we getting in? Several men are trying to get the horse free of the fence with an angle grinder. Oh no, stop! Stop that for a minute. Stop that for a sec. Keep that life jacket on our head. Keep them on her. They're struggling to keep the animal's head out of the water. It's a dangerous situation, as the horse could panic and kick out. I never thought the horse was in there when I seen the fence gone. Because I come over day and night to walk the dog, you know? But he, he seen the fence was gone this morning. And he said, Dad, come in here. The fence is gone, so come in. And I just heard a big rumble. There's the horse in the fence, you know? The local men are working well with Tony and Liam and are getting together to pull the horse free. Lads, you want to pull this way, not straight up, so she flips. If the horse is to survive, it has to get on its feet. Hey, lads, pull! Come on, come on, pull! Again, up, up, up. No, pull on, pull on, pull on! Why do we have her up? Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Let her rest there, let her rest. Let her have a breather. The horse has been here all night and is exhausted. We want to pull as tight as to this possible. One, two, three. With all their strength, they give it one last push right, to get the horse out Keep and away to safety. Right, right, let her relax. We're a hammer in safety. Whoa. Now she's in shock, so just. We need tinfoil blankets from the van. With so much time spent in the stream, the horse is freezing and needs to be warmed up. Tony calls the vet for help. I don't know whether the leg is broke or fractured or not in it. Is it possible that you could come down? The animal is taken back out to the main road. It was a good team effort amongst the whole lot of us. And it was a good result for the horse. He's out now. He's going to be transported back to the Dublin SPCA for emergency medical vet treatment. The vet has arrived and has a look at the injuries. Fortunately, it seems that there's nothing broken and the horse just has superficial wounds.